Hi my loves, welcome back to the Stars Cartel channel. If you don't know, I am Star. The message I heard is, they tried. The scripture comes from Jeremiah 35 and 6. We do not drink wine, they said to me. Jonadab, Rechab's son, our father, forbade us in these words. Neither you nor your children shall ever drink wine. Build no house and sow no seed. Neither plant nor own a vineyard. You shall dwell in tents all your life, so that you may live long on the earth where you are way far. Now we have heeded Jonadab, Rechab's son, our father, in his prohibit prohibitions, uh, prohibitions all our lives. We have not drunk wine, neither we, nor our wives, nor our sons, nor our daughters. We build no houses to live in. We own no vineyards, our fields, our crops. And we live in tents. We obediently do everything our father jo Jonadab commanded us. But when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, invaded this land, we decided to come into Jerusalem to escape the army of the Chaldeans and the army of the Aram. That is why we are now living in Jerusalem. Then this word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Go say to the men of Judah, to the citizens of Jerusalem, Will you not take correction and obey my word, says the Lord? The advice of Jonadab, Rechab's son, by which he forbade his children to drink wine, has been followed. To this day they have not drunk it. They obeyed their father's command. Me, however, you have not obeyed. Although I spoke to <laughs> stubborn, stubborn children. Okay. I, like I, I got stubborn. Okay. I spoke to you. I, I'm going to say it again. Me, however, you have not obeyed. Okay. And this is like, as I'm reading this, like God is sure. Like this is like a parent saying, do you see how your friend listened to their parents? Do you see how your friends obey their parents? You see, you see, but when I tell you to do something, okay. And Let me go back. The advice of Jonadab, Rechab's son, by which he forbade his children to drink wine, has been followed. To this day, they have not drunk it. They obeyed their father's command. Me, however, you have not obeyed, although I spoke to you untiringly and insistently. I kept sending you all my servants, the prophets, telling you to turn back, all of you, from your evil way, to reform, reform your conduct and not follow strange gods or serve them. If you would remain on the land which I gave you and your fathers, but you did not heed me or obey me. Yes, the children of Jonadab, Rechab's son, observed the command which their father laid on them. But this people does not obey me. Now therefore, says the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, I will bring upon Judah and all the citizens of Jerusalem every evil that I have threatened. Because when I spoke, they did not obey. When I called, they did not answer. But to the company of, Reca of the Rechabites, Jeremiah said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, since you have obeyed the command of Jonadab, your father, kept all his commands and done everything he commanded you. Thus, therefore, says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, never shall there fail to be a descendant of jo Jonadab, Rechab's son, standing in my service. Okay. Whew. That, that was that was that was that, that was a long scripture, y'all. Okay. That was a long scripture. Like that was that was that was that was a tough one. God said. 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 There, there, that he is sick and tired of being sick and tired. Um, uh, like this is, uh, I just feel like this person is very persistent with arguing with God. I don't know who this is watching my channel, but the who uh, this person is persistent at going back and forth with God. God already told them what he wanted them to do and how he wanted them to do it. And instead of them listening to God's command, they insist on doing whatever it is they want to do. God says that this person has even been trying to attack those of us, like those of his children, 
that are listening, that do listen to what he says, that do want to live the way he wants us to live. They are trying to put forth effort to destroy his children that obey his laws and obey his commands and, it, and that listen to him when he says stop and listen to him when he says go here and listen to him when he says no, that's not for you. God says that this person has even like like this person wants other people to join in with their sin. And they want other people to join in with their sin. They want other people to agree with their foolery. God says that this person, since they insist on being that way, leave them to it. That is their problem. They don't want to obey God. They did not want to take heed to his word. They insisted on following strange gods and ignoring God's command. God says that, um, he said they wrote a check that they cannot cash and leave them to it. I'm being reminded of, um, when I was in high school, my school decided to enforce this very strict and expensive uniform system not only did we have to wear uniforms but they had to be the school issued uniforms and the shirts were whereas you could get a shirt for uh back then probably like five dollars from walmart they want to charge you forty dollars for a shirt fifty dollars for a jacket and when it got cold obviously a lot of parents could not afford these expensive jackets and we wanted to wear our jackets to school. They said they and then they um had this rule, even though it was very cold outside, they told children, 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 that if you and now I'm thinking about this as an adult and it makes me mad. OK, I'm going to be real. If I was a parent in that situation, I would have took off work and came up there. OK, um, but. Okay, so I, they, they, they changed the rule to where if you were in a, a jacket that is out of uniform, you must leave the classroom, go back to your locker, put the jacket in your locker, and then walk back to class with no jacket on. Okay, and you know, I live in Houston where our cold weather back then, okay, because we didn't have some real winter storms, but our cold weather back then was kind of like not as cold. But in reality, to us, it's cold, okay? <laughs> when you're from a hot, humid climate and it get cold, it's cold, okay? Even if it's a little breeze, it's cold. If that would have went worse, like, if that would have went in the negative, how many children could have gotten sick behind that? How many lawsuits could have been? And, and in reality, they gave all of us that wanted to be warm detention. Okay, I remember they asked me to go to the office. The lady at the office took my jacket and I had to walk around all day without a jacket. And I really wish I would have had somebody to stand up for me because that is cruel and unusual punishment. And now that I think about it, we should sue, okay? But that was cruel and unusual punishment. It was ridiculous. But I just feel like God is saying, you know, in the end of it, at the end of the day, when they had dang near the entire school in detention, the parents came in, stormed in the building, and complained, 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 complained. And they had to take all that back. So what God is saying, what God is saying, leave them to it. Leave them to it. Because they are going to figure out why God said no. God said, uh-uh. You've done enough. You already told them it's wrong. You told them not to do it. You told them to turn away from it. Now they will see why God said no. There is something that they don't see that God see. There is something that God is trying to protect them from. It is something God is trying to protect them from. But they don't see it. They keep ignoring God. God said lead them to it and they will see exactly what he was trying to tell them. And that's the message. God says, like, it's, it, and this is not a, a case of God wanting, like, God has been trying to protect this person. God has been trying to protect this person. You may have even been trying to protect this person. But God says, since they want to ignore him, 
and they don't want to listen, let them go and find out. God says that this person will reap what they sow and they will see why God said no in the first place. And as for you, um, never shall there fail to be a descendant of Jonadab, Rechab's son, standing in my service. God says for um, some of you, you will not only go on like your children will carry on and you will go on to have more children. It could even... um. Be a situation, like, I'm thinking about what I was just, like, literally just reading, okay? But it could even be a situation where, like, um, you it, it was a bad situation, bad relationship, or a bad friendship, or bad whatever. And you have decided to remove yourself. And, you know, it may be a situation where this person has tried to make you out to be a monster because you removed yourself. From the situation but in reality you know the sad thing about it especially um abusive relationships abusive situations um i think the saddest thing is that sometimes the person who is actually being abused the person that is actually the victim is the one that ends up getting all the bad the bad um I hear bad publicity, the bad, like, the framing and all this. It's always made out. They're always made out to be this awful person. When in reality, they gracefully bowed out. And God says for you, you have gracefully bowed out. You gracefully you listen to God. You humbled yourself before God. And God instructed you to gracefully bow out, peacefully leave. And now this person has made you out to be a monster because you peacefully left. They are the one that is truly the monster. God said, lead them to it because they themselves will show their true hand. Just like at this school, they were trying to act like the kids were just so bad for doing what we were supposed to do and putting on a jacket. Several teachers were against this and did not like this rule. But the rule was enforced, the school was enforcing a rule because they wanted to make money. In reality, the school should have been sued. They should have, and they should have, and they should have been sued for what they did, okay? And in reality, they were wrong. They were trying to act like the students were so bad for putting on a jacket. Nobody came with any kind of, it wasn't like the situation where somebody's trying to come up there with little bitty shorts on. Ain't nobody coming up there with a little skirt on. Nobody coming up there trying to show their body off. We trying to make sure we warm. And they're punishing us for that. God says, for someone, you were in a situation where you were feeling nothing but cold. Maybe this person was being cold towards you, being mean to you, mistreating you, may have even been abusing you. And you said, I need to go somewhere where I can be warm. God says, and then this person turned around and tried to make you seem like you the bad guy because you decided to cover for safety, take cover for safety. God said, uh-uh. It will go back around on them. It will turn back around on them. They will show their true colors. They're going to show their true colors. They will show their true colors because God said what he said and he mean what he said. And if he told you to leave, he said leave and he meant it. God said, don't you worry about that. Don't you worry about, let them, let them carry on. Leave them to it because they don't want to listen to God. And whatever sin it is that they are doing, that sin is going to be their downfall. Whatever it is that they refuse to listen to God about, it will be their downfall. God said for some of these people, they're going to get caught slipping. And that's just what it is. And that's the message. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe.